Hello, curious and environmentally conscious grade 7 students. Today, we are embarking on a fascinating journey into the heart of our planet, exploring the topic of use and abuse of natural resources. Just like you, our Earth is a living entity with limited resources, and how we interact with it can have profound consequences for our world, our future, and all the creatures that call it home. From part one on this topic, we saw that you can imagine for a moment that Earth is like a magical treasure chest filled with priceless gems. These gems represent our natural resources, things like clean air, fresh water, rich soil, lush forests, and valuable minerals. We rely on these resources every day for our survival and comfort, from the air we breathe to the food we eat and the energy that powers our homes. Now, here's the twist, while these treasures seem endless, they are not. Earth's treasure chest has limits, and some of these gems take thousands, even millions of years to form. That means we must use our resources wisely, just like we would with a precious stash of treasure. But, sadly, we don't always do that. In our adventure together, we will also uncover the challenges we face when we misuse or abuse these resources, threatening not only the balance of our planet, but also our own well-being. So, are you ready to embark on this exciting quest to understand the use and abuse of natural resources? Get ready to dive deep into the heart of our Earth and discover the amazing world of treasures that surround us every day. People use natural resources in many different ways. Natural resources use means that humans are using them to satisfy their needs and wants. Rocks and soil can indeed contain valuable minerals like gold and diamonds. These minerals are often hidden beneath the Earth's surface, waiting to be discovered. The discovery of these minerals can be very exciting, and they have significant value. However, it's important to note that mining for these minerals can have environmental impacts, and it should be done responsibly to protect the environment. So, rocks and soil can hold hidden treasures like gold and diamonds, and they play a part in making our world a bit more sparkly and valuable. When we burn coal, it produces a lot of heat. This heat can be used in different ways, like in power plants to make electricity. Coal is burned to heat up water and produce steam. This steam is then used to turn turbines, which generate electricity. However, it's important to know that while burning coal can produce a lot of energy, it also releases pollution and greenhouse gases into the air, which can harm the environment. So, scientists and engineers are always looking for cleaner and more sustainable ways to produce heat and electricity. Coal is not only valuable for energy production, but also for providing essential chemicals used in various industries that make our lives more comfortable and convenient. However, it's important to use these resources responsibly to minimize their impact on the environment. The soil is like nature's garden bed. It's where we plant seeds to grow fruits, vegetables, and grains that make up a big part of our meals. Soil is also essential for growing and sustaining forests, which provide homes for animals and help keep our planet healthy. Soil plays a role in raising animals too. It provides a place for animals to walk on, find food, and dig for shelter. Farmers also use soil to grow the crops that feed their animals. Certain types of soil, like clay, are perfect for making things like pottery and ceramics. People have been using clay from the soil to create dishes, vases, and art for a very long time. Many animals, insects, and tiny organisms call the soil home. It's like an underground city for these creatures, and it's essential for the balance of life on Earth. Air is crucial for transportation, especially for airplanes. Planes need air to fly. When they move, the shape of their wings and engines allow them to use air to lift off the ground and stay in the sky. Without air, flying would be impossible. Air also serves as a natural cleaner. It helps get rid of waste gases and poisonous fumes that can be harmful to the environment and our health. Air is used to make machines work, especially those powered by engines. 
For example, a car's engine uses a mixture of air and fuel to create small explosions that move the car forward. Similarly, many factories and industries use air-powered machines for various tasks. Wind turbines are like giant, modern windmills. They have big, rotating blades that are turned by the wind. When the wind blows, it causes these blades to spin, and that spinning motion is used to generate electricity. So, wind is harnessed as a source of clean and renewable energy through wind turbines. Water is essential for agriculture. It's used to irrigate, or water, crops to help them grow. It also provides a source of drinking water for farm animals, ensuring their health and well-being. In our homes and communities, we use water for a wide range of purposes. We drink it to stay hydrated, use it for washing dishes, taking showers, and doing laundry. Water is also crucial for flushing away sewage and keeping our environment clean and safe. Industries rely on water for various processes. Water is used in factories to make products, cool machinery, and clean equipment. In mining, water is used to extract minerals and other valuable resources. Our planet is home to over 7 million people, and the number keeps growing rapidly. Each person uses some of the Earth's natural resources, like food, water, and forests, for their needs. This puts a lot of pressure on our planet's resources. The problem is that when we use these resources in a wrong or harmful way, they can get used up faster than they can naturally replenish. This is called the abuse of natural resources. When resources are abused, there won't be enough left for future generations to use and enjoy. Our Earth's resources, like food, water, and forests, are disappearing at an alarming rate because of this abuse. It's crucial that we use these resources wisely and responsibly to ensure there's enough for us and for the generations that come after us. Protecting our planet's resources is a shared responsibility to safeguard the environment and ensure a sustainable future. Below are some examples of ways in which people are abusing the world's natural resources. Forest abuse includes illegal logging and deforestation, which disrupt ecosystems and contribute to climate change. Clearing land for farming and building destroys plants and animals that live in these areas. Deforestation lowers the available supplies of valuable wood, destroys the places where animals and people live, and affects the atmosphere's balance. Air pollution from industries and cities fills the air with harmful chemicals that can harm people's health and damage the environment. Cars and factories use huge amounts of oil every day. They also release poisonous chemicals that cause air pollution, water pollution, and soil pollution. Dumping waste materials from mines on the surface leads to soil pollution and water pollution. Poaching wild animals for pleasure or trade has resulted in many animals becoming endangered or extinct. Overfishing has endangered some species of marine life. Overfishing reduces the ocean's fish stocks. Reduced number of fish affects jobs and the supply of food. Sustainable fishing practices and marine conservation efforts are vital to protect these resources. Soil overuse and poor farming practices can lead to soil erosion and degradation. Proper crop rotation and soil conservation can help maintain healthy soil. Water pollution and water waste are forms of abuse. Saving water through shorter showers, fixing leaks, and avoiding polluting activities helps protect this resource. Many people around the world eat fish as their main source of protein. With the growing world population, more fish than ever are being caught and eaten, which puts some fish in danger of being used up or going extinct. Here are some interesting facts. About 2, 6 billion people depend on the oceans for food or income. 
Nowadays, the average person eats about 6 kilograms more fish than people did in the 1960s. Today, marine resources are very limited and, in some cases almost gone. 85% of available fish are being fished at, or above, sustainable levels. A quarter of marine resources caught are thrown away, including birds, turtles and sharks. Marine resources are very limited today, and in some cases, almost gone. So what can we do to save our fish? The Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative, or SASI, tries to teach people about fishing methods that do not harm the environment or abuse fish resources. SASI helps people make good choices when it comes to seafood so that we don't harm the ocean and the fish in it. The initiative seeks to protect fish populations and marine ecosystems from overfishing and unsustainable harvesting practices. The Sassy Shopper's Guide helps shoppers to buy fish that are not in danger. The Sassy Shopper's Guide uses colors to tell us which seafood is okay to eat and which we should avoid. Fish on the green list are the best choice by as the species on this list will not run out anytime soon. For fish on the orange list, you should think twice before buying these species as they are running out quickly. Species of fish, or types of fish, on the red list must not be bought as the species are in big danger of becoming extinct or are illegal to catch and buy. Let's listen to this informative video from Sassy. There's an app for everything, for seeing yesterday's results, today's weather, and even tomorrow's trends. You can find a lift, or even a date. And if you're ordering dinner, there's even an app that can help you save our ocean life. Lots of stores and restaurants are selling fish that are struggling to recover from dwindling numbers, because as long as we keep paying for them, people will keep fishing them. With the help of the WWF Sassy app, you'll be able to see when it's okay to order a certain fish, when it's not, and which partners WWF Sassy are working with. So you can help us lower the demand for red-listed fish that are in trouble which means there'll be less incentive for anyone to fish for them, giving them a chance to recover. So before you order fish, simply check the WWF Sassy app to see which list it's currently on. Green, orange, or red. With the right information at your fingertips, you'll be able to find a tasty dish that won't harm the ocean. Remember, making informed choices makes you part of the solution. Download the free app and become an ocean champion today. Welcome to Going Green, our weekly feature. Consumers have been told that they need to look at menus carefully to make sure that they're not being served fish that are red listed by the WWF Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative. For more on this, I'm joined by Pavitre Pillay. She's the head of the WWF SASI program. She joins me via Skype. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Talk to us about what this list actually is. Thank you very much for having me. Well, the SASI list, which stands for the Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative, is actually a very easy traffic light system to get consumers to make very smart choices when they're choosing seafood. So it's, uh, it's, it's a sustainable, an ecological sustainability rating. It puts the power in the hands of the consumer. And how it works is that we, uh, we scientifically assess all species that are found on our market. And we look at things like, you know, if the species is well managed, stock is doing well in the oceans and if there's some kind of ecosystems effects of that fishery and then based on categories we actually rate it's red orange or green and that's where the traffic light comes so green which means these are healthy stock the stock is well managed the the species does well under fishing trade. orange usually means you know what think twice about consuming these there's a little bit of problem there's some conservation concerns they are, their populations are numbers are low, their abundances are not doing so well. And then finally, there's the red category. And that's the one that asks you to please not buy, not purchase, and not eat, because these species are of major conservation concern. Their numbers are dwindling, and most of their stock have collapsed mm -hmm. in our ocean. One of the, those um, fish on that red list is Cape salmon, and there's also prawns on that list. Tell us more. Well, Cape salmon, often known as Khalyun, uh, people often call it Cape salmon on restaurant menus. And, and some species of prawns are actually red-listed. Prawns are usually red-listed because of the way they're fished. 
they're one of the 